The two big new features in Setlist Maker 2.0 are the performance mode and the synchronization between devices. But there are several smaller features, and I want to walk you through those as well so you can take advantage of them. Uh, the first thing you'll notice, actually, is that the Setlist Maker app has a new icon. Uh, the cheesy photo that I took of my one of my notebooks is gone and replaced with a nice professional icon that you might not really be able to see on the video. But I point it out because when you uh, download this version, uh, you might not uh, find it right away. But just look for the green background with the microphone, and that is Setlist Maker's new icon. When you view a set in Setlist Maker, you um, see the uh, document icons if you've attached charts to your songs. And um, the functionality on this window is a little bit different than it was before. Um, previously, you could tap to open a document and then you could swipe and change between the documents um, and actually control the audio and see the other information when you're there as well. Now that functionality has kind of moved to the performance mode now. You, you now have uh, even more options for navigating through your charts and if you didn't already watch the performance mode video um, I explain all that stuff. But in the uh, default set view um, we're doing something a little different here. So the uh, ability to swipe between charts is gone, but what you have instead is the ability to send and receive charts to other apps. Uh, so if you tap your chart, there's an interaction button in the upper right corner. It keeps going away, but uh, let me tap it again. And there it is. And we have the option to open the chart in other apps. And depending on the format of your chart, the uh, you'll see different apps here that can open that format. So this is a PDF chart and by default it's asking me to open it in iBooks. But um, I've also have, I also have Goodreader installed on here that can read PDFs. So I'll choose that and it'll send my document out to Goodreader and open it up. So here's my chart in Goodreader and the reason I'm uh, showing you this example is that Goodreader is one of the apps that lets you add annotations to your charts. So let's uh, just put some stuff on here. I'm just going to draw some stuff on here just for demonstration purposes and save those changes. And now uh, Goodreader has the same functionality of being able to pass documents between apps. Same icon down here. So I'm going to tap that and now I'm going to say open in and we're going to uh, flatten the annotations, otherwise Setlist Maker won't see them. So we're going to say flatten annotations, and then Setlist Maker appears as one of the apps that you can open it in. So we'll send it back to Setlist Maker. Uh, it's asking me to replace the file since I've edited it in another app, so this gives me a, uh, an opportunity to confirm that. So I'll say yes, replace, and it has been copied. Okay, when OS 5 comes out, your document will close itself automatically when you send it to another app. But until that is available, you'll have to close your document yourself when you return to Setlist Maker and then reopen it to see your changes. Anyway, um, so now what we have is the ability to edit files right on the iPad without going uh, to your computer and back and forth. Um, if you have uh, if you have Goodreader, you can add annotations. If you have Pages. Um, and you're using pages as your format, you can just go ahead and edit your charts right on your, right on your device and just send it back into Setlist Maker. Now, a side benefit of this functionality is that any app can now send a chart into Setlist Maker. That means you don't need to use iTunes file sharing anymore to, uh, to move charts into the Setlist Maker app. I think that's still probably the most efficient way if you have a lot of charts to move but if you just want to send a chart over to your iPad real quick, uh, you can now just email it to yourself, for example. So uh, I just emailed myself a chart a little bit ago. So I'll go into my email, and here's my message and my PDF. And I'm going to just tap and hold that. And now I have options to open the chart in different apps. Again, it depends on what the format is of your chart. Um, but if it's a format that Setlist Maker can read, then Setlist Maker will show up as an option here. So I'll say open in Setlist Maker, and Setlist Maker tells me that it copied the file in, and so now I can attach that file to a song.
And there it is. And there's my chart. Now when you're viewing charts in this window, the chart will just fill the width of the screen. But when you're viewing charts in the performance mode, um, the chart will size itself to fit into this uh, panel on the right and still leave uh, the maximum amount of room for your set list on the left. So you'll see that this document fits perfectly into this space. Uh, but in order to do that, we have to know what size your charts are. This is a letter size document, uh, which is standard here in the US. Um, but for those of you in other countries who are using A4 charts, um, it's not going to fit in this space the, as nicely and neatly as it does with the letter chart. So there's a new option uh, in the database settings where you can specify what size your charts are. It just says chart size, and the two options are letter and A4. So let's change it over to A4. And if I view one of my charts now in performance mode, it's not going to fit properly. It's cut off on the side. But I do have a sample database here that has an A4 chart in it. And so if I go into that database and hit performance mode and then view that chart, and now it fits perfectly into the screen. Because A4 is a little taller and skinnier, that means that actually your set list can be a little bit wider if you're using A4 charts. But this is just going to depend on what, uh, what format you're using for the charts you've created. And so you can just uh, choose whichever option is appropriate for you in the database settings. Let me go back to my other database where I have more data and show you a couple other options. Um, when you email or print a set, uh, previously every set would print with the title and then if you have them entered the key and the other field. And this is now configurable on a database by database level. So uh, to change that you would go into the uh, database settings and the second section of options here is set list contents and now we just have toggle switches for all the different fields that you can show on your set and so right now I've got key and other selected so it works just like before but if I wanted to show my styles and take off the other field I can do that um, let's just take a look um, in your default view you're still going to see all the fields but if you go into performance mode or if you print or email the set, you'll see this change. So now I don't see my other field, but I do see my style. Um, there's also a switch here for the color labels. So if you want to see your colors on your sets when you're performing, you can do that. So now I've got a couple things in blue here. Um, but if you want to just keep it simple and have uh, your sets appear in black and white, you can leave that setting turned off. And there's one more option in this section, and it says songs only, one column per set. And uh, when you enable that option, you'll see that the other fields are disabled uh, because this option is only going to print the song titles. Um, but instead of uh, making one long list with lines where the breaks are, if you have breaks in your set, it's going to print one set. Uh, in one column and then at the break it's going to start a new column, etc. It's hard to explain as you can tell from my long label, but here's what it looks like. I printed this out just a little bit ago and so I've got two sets and they're printing in two columns. Now this doesn't really look great uh, until you consider uh, another new option here and that is the ability to print in portrait or landscape orientation. And if we change it to landscape then we get this which is a little nicer. If I had two set breaks, um, I would have three columns. In this case, I just had uh, one set break, so I have one set in each column. Now, the option to print in portrait or landscape applies whether or not you're using this new option. So if you're just finding that your sets uh, work better in landscape orientation, even without this option, you can still go ahead and use that. But some people prefer this format of just the songs in columns, and so these two settings work well together uh, if that's what you'd like to do. And uh, this one column per set option doesn't affect anything in the app itself. It doesn't affect performance mode. It only affects files that you email or files that you print uh, directly from the app. There's just one more option I need to show you here in the database settings. 
and that is the emailed setlist format. We used to always email setlists in HTML format, uh, but now we have an RTF option as well. So I heard from some users who uh, were having trouble getting uh, HTML files through their firewall at work, and also uh, heard from some users who were kind of confused by the HTML format because different email clients handle that differently. So if you're having trouble sending sets to your bandmates in HTML format, try the RTF format. Theoretically, uh, the output will look exactly the same, um, but it may, may need some tweaking, so let me know if you have any feedback on that. Okay, so again, the two big features of Setlist Maker 2.0 are the performance mode and the synchronization and I have separate videos for both of those features so if you're interested in those features uh, just look in my YouTube channel for those two videos but all the features I just showed you now are free uh, with version 2.0 so as soon as you download that version you'll get all this stuff so I hope it works well for you and thanks for watching